let, let's just keep the, the train rolling on exciting games with exciting offenses. UTSA, a one-and-a-half point favorite at Houston. I had to double check and make sure I did not put an AAC matchup down because this is not that. Both teams have moved conferences this offseason. Game has an over-under of 59 and a half. It kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern on FS1. This might be the most fascinating game to me this weekend. Maybe not the most exciting. Maybe not my favorite. Maybe not even my most anticipated, but most fascinating. I think we're going to learn a lot about both of these teams in this game. UTSA, I do have to mention DeCorian Clark, pardon me, is a game-time decision for this game. He he missed like all of camp recovering from an injury he sustained last year. It's a big deal because Zakari Franklin has gone to Ole Miss. He was the top pass getter there. Uh, but if JT Clark misses, I'm looking to Joshua Cephas. Uh, his props, his over, because he is now the alpha. I mean, he's already the alpha. But if you have one alpha on that passing offense, the volume has to go somewhere in in Based on last year and based on looks like your projections this year, you should be able to throw the ball on Houston a little bit. This line's flip-flopped all offseason long. You, you can find either team favored at any point, I think, as far as two points in either direction. Um, do note, though, that even though the teams are flipping as favorite underdog, it's really not a big de- deal because zero is a truly dead number. You cannot end on a zero, so it has no, uh, no impact on this whatsoever. Some of that, uh, sorry, let's uh, talk about total has been bet way, way, way down from 65. Some of that movement came after week zero. Um, I think that's market driven, though. I don't think it has much to do with the clock because neither team rushed over 50% uh, last year. They're, they're more a through the air team. Houston brings in Donovan Smith. I, I maintain is a pretty solid portal ad. I think he's going to be their starting quarterback. They do lose Alt McCaskill to the portal. I talked about him with Colorado. He didn't play last year, but he was still a big piece uh, returning for, for Houston this year was probably going to be a feature on the offense. They also lose their top offensive lineman, uh, Cam Johnson. Neither team fielded much of a, de- much of a defense, and which was truly shocking for Houston for me. They came off of that 2021 season as a lockdown, shutdown defense. They lose a couple of guys to the NFL, but not the entire basis, and the whole thing falls apart. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they're a top 20 unit, maybe even top 15 unit in 2021, crashed all the way outside the top 100 last year. Uh, in UTSA, they return eight starters on defense. Houston returned seven. Yeah, that drop-off was real. Uh, you're not kidding. I'll get to that here in a second. This is my number two game of the primetime window. I love being able to now break down games based on my watchability scores by the TV window and allows me to really you know, prioritize what game gets the main TV in the setup, which games are on the, on the sides. Um, so I like talking about it in that kind of context. I actually have Houston minus one and a half. Uh, it's a 54% win expectancy. Like you said, it's a true toss-up game. Wouldn't be surprised either way. Um, despite being the projected underdog, I actually do have UTSA as the better power-rated team. Uh, they're at number 54 for me, while Houston's number 61. Uh, both these teams are pretty similar. Like you, like you mentioned, you know, good, high-powered offense and to be frank, a below average defense. Houston has the best of the four units in this game with the number 25 offense. Should be exciting, should be fun. They also have the worst of the four units, and that would be their defense, which is projecting as number 101 nationally. Uh, UTSA's offense checks in at number 37. The defense is currently projecting number 79 nationally. So the difference for me here in this game is the home field advantage. I mean, that's what this boils down to. It's in Houston. It's the Cougars' first game at the Power 5 level since the old Southwest Conference days many years ago. So I do think their fans will be ready for this one. Uh, It is, you know, a Texas rivalry, if you will. There's so many teams in Texas. You can't call them all rivals. But I think this is a budding uh, UTSA program. Obviously, Houston's making the transition. So they're going to take each other seriously here. Uh, It's not a look-ahead spot for either team. Uh, Houston's heading to Rice next week, UTSA welcoming Texas State. So, again, talk about all these teams in Texas. No (laughs) one's leaving the state. They're all playing each other around there. Uh, Texas State going to San Antonio in week two bottom line I have Houston minus one and a half at home it's a 54% win expectancy for the Cougars if I recall correctly I don't have it in front of me but I believe Houston doesn't leave the state of Texas until Halloween (laughs) whether it be hosting teams or visiting them like you said there's so many teams in Texas they don't even leave the state uh, which granted you know it's a big state so there there could be closer games they have out of state but yeah I'm pretty sure they don't leave the state until uh, Halloween and do uh, know I'm looking, at their, I'm looking at their schedule. It's week nine. They get UTSA yeah. at home, at Rice, home to TCU, home to Sam Houston, at Texas Tech, by home to West Virginia, home versus Texas. They finally go in week nine to Kansas State. Uh, they only lead the state twice, uh, also at UCF in week 13. So <laughs> there's a lot so, of teams in Texas, and they're getting like they, many of the outside home. Do they only play one team outside the state of Texas until they leave? West Virginia, right? All those other ones are in state. All their out of Correct. conference are in state. Goodness Correct. gracious. All yep. right. Yep. And then they go to Baylor later in the year, too, which is also in Waco. So, yeah. 
It's crazy. <laughs> there should be, though, a pretty strong UTSA uh, presence there. First of all, UTSA fans travel like you would not believe. I went to the Frisco Bowl a couple years ago when they played in that like amazing representation. They were decked out for tailgates. This is a fan base that travels and travels very well. It's only a three hour drive and zero turns. You, you, if you live in San Antonio, you get on interstate 10, you head East three hours and you get off the interstate and you're at the, and you're at the university of Houston. I made that drive before it's, it's a breeze. So I think there's going to be plenty of UTSA representation. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's 33%, like two thirds to one third, uh, just because that's how strong the UTSA fan base is. But uh, Houston's fans are passionate. Uh, we've talked about on the show before. They're a little rowdy, but they are passionate. Um, so I think this will be actually a really exciting environment uh, and, and an even better game. Um, even though the total's way down, I actually still feel better on the over. Uh, if I can get 59, maybe even 58, not really confident that we'll get 58. Um, but, geez, if you're thinking about betting the total, don't just bet it at 59.5. 59 is the fourth most occurring total at 2.9%. You don't want to lose that 3% edge. Um, but I do think this is a game where both teams are going to be able to score and score free.